Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio tutorial here. I'm Exterminator, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to be doing quite a few new tutorials uh, now that 13, 0.13 has hit, so I'm going to be redoing some and doing a bunch of new ones. So today, we are going to start with the new rail planner system and a rail building, and then also um, setting up the new train weight conditions. So we're going to start with the rail building and the rail planner. So, if you've noticed, there's no longer any curved rails. Before we would have these straight rails and curved rails. Now we just have normal rails. And you can see here on the tooltip, uh, used to build straight rails manually or through the rail planner. Uh, the rail planner can build short paths directly using left mouse button or long ghost paths using, using shift plus left mouse button. So, we can either build straight rails manually like we used to, um, however, we cannot build curves this um, any anymore um, unless we use the rail planner. Okay, so we can build these manually if we want to. Now, the rail planner tool, if you mouse over a rail you've already built, you can see this green arrow. This is going to indicate the direction you're going to build in, and then you just click. You don't click and drag. Well, you, you don't need to hold down. I just left-clicked once and drag out, and... It's going to try to path the best way to wherever my cursor is. Now, it's only going to do it so far. I think it's like 10 tiles or something. Um, so it's only going to go this far, and then once I click, it'll build it, and uh, then do it again. So on and so forth. So right now, I just want to build straight. If I do that, I just click to have it build. Do this. Um, come over here, here, here. Um, you know. So essentially, you can kind of... Now, you could just kind of click and hold it down and it's gonna um, not really do anything so you will need to keep clicking um, where you want it now obviously there's a tree in the way um, so I'm just gonna undo that but there you go so this allows you to build things potentially um, even quicker if you like know where you want to go because um, it will just pull them out of your inventory and uh, kind of go where you want to go um, and at this point, I've gone out of the range and we've hit a tree. Okay, but that's kind of how that works. Now, if you're using a personal ro roboport, um, or you're in your base in a uh, construction zone area, I actually prefer using the ghost placing method better. Um, because this lets you draw out uh, pretty much an infinite distance before you um, actually tell it to set a ghost, um, instead of just as little bits at a time. Uh, because these can be kind of annoying to get it where you want. So what we need to do is we need to place a rail to start with. Okay, you need to place a rail, um, otherwise it's not really going to work very well. You can do it over ghosts as well. Okay, but we need to place a rail. Now if we hold down shift and left click, I don't even need to hold shift anymore. I, I'm not holding anything, I'm just moving my mouse. Um, this is going to let me drag infinite wherever I want it. Um, now, if there were certain places I needed to do curves, I would maybe need to do this piecemeal. Um, but say I just want a rail to come out to here, it's going to decide that, you know, maybe that's the best way to get there. So I click, it's going to place a ghost down. Again, this is why you need robots. Um, and then I can decide, you know, do I want it to come out here or here maybe? Maybe we want a station here. Um, perhaps we then want it to, uh, you know, loop back around and kind of come this way again. And this is just, I think, actually much easier. Uh, now, if you wanted, you could obviously do this without robots. We just have to place it manually, um, which could get a little bit tricky. Um, you can see here, um, it does work, though. So if you want to try to plan it out with your ghost first, that's definitely a viable option. Um, robots would obviously be the preferred method. But you can kind of follow these lines here. Now, I think junctions, creating junctions, will be a little bit tricky. Okay, you will have to be careful, um, or maybe not careful, I mean, you're not going to, you know, break anything, uh, but you, you will have to maybe fiddle with it a little more to get your junctions right, because, you know, like a T-junction, uh, where we would normally just have curved rails and could do it quite easily. Uh, I'll try to demonstrate here. So if we wanted a T-junction to bring something off this way, normally we just kind of curve out. Um, here you kind of just have to play with it and try to, you know, get it where you want. So, you know, I kind of want something like that. Uh, 
you know, and then we want it maybe come like that. And, uh, you know, this was obviously too wide of a turn because um, we don't really need this much space in here. Uh, but then, you know, we might need some of these going the other direction. So, you know, you will have to just play with it a little bit. And, uh, you know, in some straight sh sections, it might almost be easier just to, uh, you know, do it manually like you used to. So, I mean, it can definitely be done. It's just a little more tricky. Okay, so that is our new rail planner. That's how you build rails now. Uh, I'm not sure how things like Farl, um, that the mod are going to work. I would think maybe they'd still work. Uh, we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, but overall, I would say this is an improvement. Once you get used to it, I think it can be much, much faster. So now we hop into the really interesting parts, with our, which are the new train weight conditions. New graphics as well, by the way. Um, you can change colors as well. Pretty much exactly what you want. Like, say, I w if I wanted this to be like... Um, a very specific orange um, like that some locomotive in real life is or something um, I could like find a picture use a color grabber uh, get the red green blue codes and stick them in here and it would be pretty much exact um, anyway so there are multiple conditions you can set let's uh, let's go over adding stops because it is a little bit different so from a locomotive uh, normally like before this update in 0.12 and before that, there would be a list of all your stations and you would just click them and add them. Um, there's no list now until you bring up this where you add a station. Um, and you need to do it up here. Down here is your weight conditions. Okay, up here is your station. So we add a station and now we have every station on our lot, um, in our map. Now these line one through fives are over here. So obviously that's not valid for this locomotive. Um, but you just pick the station you want, you add it, Let's just say we wanted that. Um, then you choose a weight condition um, and you would just do that. Okay, so that's how you add a station. Um, and then you can delete stations. You can tell it to go to the station like you used to. Um, you will need it on automatic to do that. Right now I have this guy on manual so that it doesn't drive off. Um, I can drive it on manual. Um, if I switch it to automatic, it'll do its thing based on the conditions. Uh, and then you can add conditions um, through here or when you add the stop, um, you can remove conditions or make them and or conditions, which I'll explain in a second. So let's start here. Um, for this one, Hogan Long. At this time, we have two conditions. Uh, we have either wait um, 10 seconds, which would be kind of like how the old system worked. Um, I, it, it just would wait 10 seconds or wait until copper plate is less than 400 in the circuit network. So this is something new. You can now add circuit conditions. So if I select my station and click add weight condition, you can see down here circuit condition. And that's what I did here. Okay, now for this to work, you obviously need a circuit network hooked up. And what I've done is you don't even need smart chests or anything. They're no longer in the game because all chests can be hooked up to the circuit network. I've hooked all these chests together. And then I strung this to this station. I used a power pole just simply because it was too far if the station were close or I could have done it directly. Um, anyway, this is now being relayed to this station. And I tell it up here to send. I click this and then just do send to train so that it's actually getting the contents of this. And uh, just to, I'll just remove this so we can go over it. Um, I do add weight condition, circuit condition. I'm going to click down here to change it to or because we don't want to wait for both things. We want, you know, whichever is going to be quickest. Um, copper plate is more than 400. Now, theoretically, this should work. Okay. What are our other conditions? Time pass, we already went over. Circuit condition, we did. Um, you could do stuff with combinators as well, much more complicated. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that. Uh, this is mostly just for the conditions themselves. Uh, but this is the simplest, most straightforward way to do it. All right, and now our other conditions, inventory full or inventory empty. This is going to essentially just tell it. Uh, so for this station, I would pretty much want to say like inventory empty um, since this is an unload station, you know, and this would basically tell it don't leave until the inventory of the train is empty. Okay, now this can cause problems. You do want to be careful with this though, guys, because uh, what what can happen is if you're loading in the chest and all your chests are full then 
this is going to just stay here forever, right? Because if this can't empty itself, it's going to stay here forever. So this is when a second condition can come in very handy. And you want to make sure that it's an OR condition. Um, so like for that, maybe I would say inventory empty OR uh, 20 seconds have passed or whatever, right? So, um, you know, that can be kind of a way to fix that. Or if you know, if you know you're using your resources fast enough, um, you'd probably be okay with just that condition, but you would have to be a little careful. Um, inventory full would work on a uh, loading station. Again, you have to be a little careful because for some reason, if your um, you know, input isn't too great, your miners have run out or something, it's going to sit here forever waiting to be full. Um, but if it's a newer mine or you just know it's sufficient, um, that's a good way to do it. You can tell it to just wait until it's full. Um, an item count, you can tell it to wait for a specific item count, which is very nice, um, which I've actually done for a condition on this other station. Or you can do inactivity, which um, honestly would probably be almost as good or sometimes better than these um, full or empty conditions. Um, this will simply just tell it, you know, after X amount of time of nothing happening, then leave the station. And, uh, and I also have that as a condition here. Okay, so we're going to send it up here and see what happens. We currently have two conditions for this station. We have five seconds of inactivity or cargo um, in the train is more than 400 copper plate. And it is because there's 1.5k uh, in this wagon alone. Okay, so it's going to get to the station and immediately leave because I have an or condition, meaning that this one is going to override the 10 seconds or the 5 seconds of inactivity. Um, if I do and, it's going to wait for both of these to be true, um, so which means it would basically wait for the five seconds of inactivity, uh, which would be longer than that because it would be loading, um, so on and so forth. So let's tell this, turn it to automatic. You can see that it leaves, and it's going to go here, and it's going to leave instantly because we have more than 400. Boom, there it goes. And theoretically, it should come here and leave instantly as well because there's more than 400 in here. And there you go. So that circuit network um, condition works very well. Just hook your chest together, hook them up to your station, tell it to relay it to the train, and then set your condition in the train. You could do much more complicated things, you know, if you're good with combinators and such. Um, now I'm going to turn this to manual so we can change some stuff. Uh, if we want to test, say, the inactivity one, if we just get rid of this guy. Um, now what's going to happen is this guy's going to go here. It's going to sit and wait until nothing has happened for five seconds, um, which may actually be a little while because it needs to load all this stuff into here. Uh, but that's pretty much how it's going to work. So he should sit here until these cargo wagons are full. And, uh, and yeah, so that that's mostly it. Very, very nice. Uh, we also have a few new uh, graphics and options here. Um, we can obviously still, still rename stations here, rename um, other stuff as well, but we now have options. If you click on the locomotive itself, it'll show you a map that you can zoom in and out of where it is, and you can switch to a camera view as well, which is almost better because if you don't know exactly where it might be, you can just switch to this. Um, obviously, you'll know where it is because you're standing right next to it um, by clicking on it, but um, <laughs> this this could still be quite useful, right? And you can zoom in and out, very cool, like a normal map. Uh, now this guy, again, is waiting until he's full, which takes longer time because they increased the inventory size here. After five seconds of nothing happening, he should leave, and there you go. So these conditions... He's out of fuel. <laughs> um, these conditions make it much easier to tell your trains to do exactly what you want without having you know issues of them you know staying longer than they should or leaving before they should um you can be a lot more specific with what you want from them okay so yeah we, we went over um the thing if you click on locomotive if you click this this will show you trains with this stop currently we only have one train using this stop um just to demonstrate though, very quickly before I close this video out, if we had say two different trains with this stop, let's go ahead and add, um, it doesn't really matter, let's just add this one and that one. Now this guy should display all three of these, and there you go. 
um, you can see that it shows this one is heading there. It actually shows where it is as well. Um, and then if you actually click on this, it'll bring you to the locomotive, and then you can switch here and be like, oh, okay, so this one's actually stuck up here. So that's when a camera view can be nice. And one last thing, there's also a button up here for trains, um, which will bring you to all your trains, um, not just the station. This is all the trains on your map, and you can do the same thing. Um, I can, like, click on this dude and check and be like, okay, well, that's the same one, or maybe I want to check on this one. Okay, that's that one there. And this is a very, very nice way to navigate your trains. Uh, just so many different improvements here. And there we go. I think that's it, guys. One last thing, which I wasn't initially planning to cover, but I'll go over it. Um, you now have indicators of everywhere you can place a signal, which is extremely nice. So this is saying you can place a signal in all of these green little box areas. You can see I can't place it outside. Um, you never were able to, so it's not like it's limiting you. Um, it's not like they changed that. They're simply just showing you anywhere you can place it, which is extremely nice, especially on like complicated junctions. Um, that can be quite useful. Um, and then when you place one, it's going to make a white square. And this is basically telling you, you know, if this is like a two-way railway, you're going to want to place another one on this side. And once you do that, it'll um, get rid of that square and, you know, there you go. And then the last thing is when you click on signals, um, or if you click on a station, is when this would be probably more useful. This will show you the spacing of stuff. Um, so those white uh, boxes on the rails there, that's going to show me exactly where the locomotive is going to line up where, and where the cargo wagons will line up. And this is super nice because, you know, before you would have to put down a station, put down a train to get your spacing right for your unloading. Now you just stick station down, check it, um, and you can set up your unloading before you even have a train with you or before one gets there. So very nice. I believe that's going to be it for this one, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Hope you, hopefully you learned a thing or two and, uh, you know, can better navigate around with your trains and uh, set their conditions and all that. So definitely more tutorials coming in the future. And until then, I look forward to seeing you all. Take care, and I hope you enjoyed.